Welcome to Night Light. Step away from the mainstream and gather around as we enlighten the world and our realities and travel this cosmic journey we call life. Join us as we share with you and provide that beacon that can guide us all to a better way. Explore with us as we examine a metaphysical montage of spiritual insights covering everything from the mundane to the magical, UFOs to unicorns, and everything in between. This is a time of awakening, of sharing and evolving, of spreading our wings and soaring on the cosmic breath of creation. Come and join with other light-minded spirits as we weave our lights together to seek understanding, enlightenment, and with a little luck, some wisdom. This is Night Light, a reminder that you are never alone. this evening to Neon Twilight with Solaris Blue Raven on Nightlight Radio. So glad you could join us because it is going to be another adventure for us because whenever Solaris is here, magic happens. All of you probably know her from her many shows in different places. Uh, She does Neon Twilight here on Blog Talk Radio, but her other two shows are now on Freedom Slips Radio, and you can find her there weekly as well. Anybody who knows Solaris knows that when you hear that name, that that there is magic that is absolutely going to happen, not only with the radio shows, but certainly with the books that she's published and the philosophies and the wisdom that she brings whenever she opens her microphone and and uh, goes out there here in podcast land and spreads spreads her insight and, and her wisdom with all of us. So <clears throat> without for, further ado, welcome to the show, Solaris. Well, thank you, Barbara. It's a pleasure to be here again, and uh, fingers crossed, no technical issues. And wonderful <laughs> to hear you, and happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's uh mm-hmm. They, they come around every year. It's rather amazing. Um, it is. Sometimes the years catch up on you, though. It's really, it's it's quite an adventure, always round. But thank you. Um, yeah. You're the one that picked tonight's topic, so <laughs> I think you're the one that should sort of lead us into what we're going to be talking about. You know, well, God knows where uh, we'll go, but, but where, are we gonna, where are we starting? Well, we were starting last week or last time with the Titanic, Although, <laughs> seems like we had a wireless issue, so we can still talk about that. I'm happy to discuss it. I, I find that it's just an interesting topic. It's been something that kind of haunts the masses for many, many centuries, it seems like. It's just been in the ether. And I, I guess uh, the biggest thing is a lot of people had premonitions about not getting on that that particular um, ship, and they still, some went, some did not. I'm, I don't know what your take is on that and, and what you'd like to add on. I know you've interviewed some wonderful guests in association with it, the Titanic. Well, you know, it's it's kind of, <clears throat> it's interesting. There were a lot of people that had premonitions about not going. And and what I found fascinating was that it was a, collections, a, a collection of some of the richest people in the world that were on that ship. Mm-hmm. And I think what, what, what continuously boggles my mind is it was it was during it was during World War Two World War One sorry it was during World War One so taking off on a ship crossing an ocean to me would be the stupidest thing in the world when there was a war going on mm-hmm. and yet they 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 rushed the ship to completion and. There's 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 always been so much mystery and and um, mystery I guess and drama connected with not only the the um, the building of the Titanic but the crew that they put on it 
the captain mm-hmm. they brought out of retirement. Um, I mean, there was I, – I, when you look at the pictures of it, and and it's been a topic that's always intrigued me. I've, I've been haunted by it, like many people. So I've done – you know, I, I've done, you know, the, A Night to Remember was one of the first books that I really read mm-hmm. several times. And then after that, there have been countless books that I've read on on, on on the ship and its building and the philosophies behind everything. And it still, it boggles my mind that they lavished such luxury on that ship. I mean, it was like, it was like, a palace inside. It mm-hmm. was just phenomenal. And it, it it was the luxury. I mean, I, I, I guess, you know, I've never been on a luxury cruise, so I don't know what it, it would be like. My aunt and uncle went, you know, many, many years ago, you know, 60, 70 years ago, took the Queen Elizabeth across, you know, they crossed uh, to England on it. And I remember mm. how luxurious it looked then, so I can't mm-hmm. imagine, you know, prior to that, just just how elegant it must have seemed. I, I mean, the the jewelry and the people that were that, that were there with their maids and their chauffeurs and their cooks and their and their butlers and and their and, and their cars. I mean, mm-hmm. it was just it was a time. It was before. You know, we had income tax, so so you know everybody just lavished money every place, and it was Hooray. it was incredible. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, you know, yeah. whoa, and and you you know you just the lifestyle. I was I was fascinated by the lifestyle of the rich, and then mm-hmm. then of course when you look into the whole thing, it it was really the third class passengers that really. It was their money that really paid for the trip, but mm-hmm. but the what it cost for for the the elegance. Um, I mean, I think there were fireplaces in some rooms. There, it, there were it was just mm-hmm. beyond be, beyond the beyond the perception of anything. And it was one of the first ships that had the um, the telegraph on it, so mm-hmm. so there was you know connection with both coasts, but. But it, it just, to this day, I think it still has such mystery connected to it. I, I've had on the show um, Charlie, um, oh, I can't remember his last name now. Pellegrino? Charlie is his first name. He's written three, Char- Pellegrino. Pellegrino. Yep. He's, mm-hmm. he's, written, he's written three books on, on the um, Titanic. And mm-hmm. when you put that on top of a night to remember, and some of the other, and of course the movie, um, I, I found myself getting drawn into it to the point where I became the the people were no longer names in a book, but they were people I they were people I knew, and mm-hmm. it it became it became so hard. To, on the third book, I had to quit because. They were. It was family that was drowning. <laughs> it was people mm-hmm. that I was very familiar with, and and you know, you just you you just can't believe that kind of of a tragedy can happen, and so many people die. It was it was actually that generation's twin towers, I think, in a way. Mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah, definitely. Considering how it's lingered, insofar as uh, one of the, it seems like everybody I know and their children, grandchildren. They all seem to be very familiar with this, not just because of the film. And I think you're right. Um, Charles Pellegrino did a fabulous job with the books and his connection, I guess, to James Cameron, too. Um, there's just an awful lot of detail in there. And, and when you said you were picking up on or felt like they were family, I, I was kind of wondering how much of that is like maybe they knew our ancestors or maybe they were connected to some of our ancestors in some distant way. Um, that's that's highly possible as well. And then, of course, there's a collective imprint of psychic information like how much of this is based on just dialing into that collective and accessing the information and being there as a psychic or an intuitive. That's a really good point. Um, I don't think, um, <clears throat> to my knowledge, um, I, I don't think I had an ancestor that was involved. But um, but it does it does seem that that 
it, it is it is a a piece of history that people are drawn back to, and of course the fact that now they have a submersible that goes down to the Titanic, and you can actually mm-hmm. see the ship, and and see, I, I think some of the things that I, I found I found most interesting was the the uh, the flatware and the uh, the plates that were, you know, just laying on the bottom on the sand like they were laid out ready to be picked up and put onto a table setting. I mean, there's so much that is still there on the on on the floor of the ocean. I don't know if they've decided to not take up any more artifacts or not, but but when you when you see what is strewn all over the the um the bottom of the ocean, you do begin to wonder um just how much is still left there and how many safes they had. And how you know how many have they recovered? I know there was one, one steward, and I don't know if it was first class or second class, but he he had gone to the safe and gotten everything people had put into the safe and returned it to them before the ship went down. Um, but I don't know if there were any you know any leftovers or whatever. It it just it would seem because first and second class pretty much got off, or at least part of each party did. But the mm-hmm. chivalry that was shown for most people, um, there there was at least one guy that dressed as a woman to get into a lifeboat. But um, mm-hmm. but it was just, it was just, it, it was such an amazing time that, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't women and children first. It was, you know, you know, the wife goes and the husband stays, and there was there was a, it was so noble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you I can make a you choice. Get, you yeah. get caught up in in. Yeah, I mean, you you got caught up in the nobility that that the band kept playing as the ship went down, and and now we know today that the ship broke in half. Um, mm-hmm. It just, you know, I don't think that society today. Is capable of that kind of um, chivalry, and it, it just—it doesn't seem like society today is in a place where people would would help others get on board and get saved in, in, in mm-hmm. and sacrifice their lives. It just—I don't think society is agreed. There. I agree with you. Yeah, there's an that's etiquette why that's I been kind, kind of, of uh, yeah. Go ahead. Well, it, it is, and, and I think who, who who do we blame for that? Because I mean, it was it was a time when the rich and famous had their their society things and everything, but but it, it the the chivalry went down to all levels of society. I mean, it 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 didn't mm-hmm. it wasn't just the rich. It was it was all levels where people were kinder to one another and people were. Um, generous to one another, so it does make one wondering. Wonder, you know, what's happening today? If if there were, you know, one of those huge, you know, Disney cruise ships that went down, um, mm-hmm. I can't, I can't, I can't imagine that there would be that kind of um, taking care of one another. Mm-hmm. It just That's a good make point you make. Me. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I think a lot of it. Well, we could blame it on social engineering, although we've had that going on forever. But I do see a deterioration in people. Etiquette's gone. Uh, just, just their mannerisms. I mean, I don't want to bash on the new generation, but I must say they're they're highly dysfunctional on a lot of levels, and there's a lot of concern connected to that kind of behavior, insofar as uh, helping their fellow man, so to speak. So yeah, I agree. I think it's a very weird um, timeline we're on right now compared to what was going on then. And even then, I'm sure they had their, their um, you know, share of imbeciles on that on that boat. If I'm not mistaken, on that ship. I'm sure, there were a few here and there that weren't so great. So, but still, all in all, I think people well, yeah. had a lot more compassion. But when you look at today, when you look at the younger generation, um, <clears throat> I'll go back 50 years, um, 60 years. Uh, when I was in high school, junior high school, we 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 still went to dance dance you know ballroom dance classes, 
and you know you learned how to greet people and how to i mean there there was that 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 um gen- that generosity of spirit that you know you 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 back off in favor of the couples that are older and things like that and and that doesn't happen today um i think mm-hmm. that the younger generation today is so locked into iPads and iPhones and stuff like that and and AI that how to behave in a group of people. I mean, we, they used to have cotillions. They no longer have them, or if they do, I don't mm-hmm. know who goes. Um, and and I'm not saying that that you know re, you know go back to that time frame, but I am saying that that there there were mores and there were courtesies that that no longer are at play, and and mm-hmm. it's a very sad thing because. Um, Grandparents and you know grandparents and great grandparents usually get shoved into a nursing home and forgotten. Um, right. And it, it you know people were taken care of in the homes. Now, if somebody was you know so ill they had to be in a nursing home, that was another another thing. But but family took care of family, and that mm-hmm. doesn't happen today. No, and changed. You just wonder, and and, and I, I blame AI because what it's done is taken the large world away from everybody and given it a small world in the palm of your hand, and you don't have to interact with it. You can watch it, but you don't have to be mm-hmm. a part of it. Right, but still their psychic um, energy is getting drawn into it. They're still getting entangled into the tech subconsciously. So it does affect behavioral patterns. It's behavior modification because it's changing the brainwave activity of the person who is interactive with the, whether it's an iPhone or, but now they have all kinds of headsets you can wear, you know, the new metaverse stuff, for example, and some other stuff they're doing. Oh, yeah. I think I showed you that link about, you know, you can go to the virtual reality, go down and to the Titanic. I mean, it's just, but it's taking away from some aspect of consciousness, in my opinion. It's, It's diverting the energy into something else, a new formula, so... Yeah, but I think it has created a, a kind of a closed circuit when it comes to interaction with others. Well, when you look at um, – now, I moved from Connecticut to Nashville, and one of the big differences that I saw is that <clears throat> down here, they say, yes, ma'am, and no, sir, and, and you know, they are they are more polite – than they were up north, and it, it mm-hmm. isn't that they're they're rude and whatever. But there's there's kids aren't taught to say yes, ma'am, and no, sir, and things like that. Mm-hmm. They're taught it still here, but That's it's nice. not taught up north. Well, they teach that in dojo. You know, I I, too, I mean, yeah. No, no, it's in any it's, place it's, where you're it's, learning it's, a discipline. What, what's you know? happening is. Yeah, I, you know, I, I have to admit, I did not teach my son to say yes, ma'am, and no, sir, and things like that. But down here, um, even even people in their fifties and sixties, if they know you're older than they are, they give you a yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. <laughs> so, so it's it's there. There are niceties that 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 are still around that. Are not being taught anymore. I, I mean, school is no longer teaching the kids today. Um, right. Any of the the rudimentaries that, that used to be taught. I mean, balancing a budget might be a good idea. Not taught. Cursive writing, not taught. History is being altered. So it, it's sort of like you know, where do we go from here? We, I, you know, it's. Mm-hmm. I know the there was. There was at least one one teacher in one of the schools down here that was telling um, the kids that the Holocaust didn't happen. How can you do that? It's crazy. Everything's going to be fantasized, though. Well, taking down the statues of of people. Why? It's Mm -hmm. part of our history. It's triggering. And and are we proud of all of our history? Are are we? Right. Yeah, I mean, we're not. It's it's a part of our history we have to remember. Mm -hmm. Um, the right. North and the South fought over slavery. 
let's let's remember that. Let's remember what it entailed. Um, <clears throat> but but you know, taking down generals um, it, because they because they were on the wrong side, or renaming places or schools or whatever because they were after somebody on the losing side. That's that's destroying history. Mm-hmm. And you know, they say history is written by the victors, but. I don't think anybody wins when you when you when you shove history all over the place like Mm-mm. it's happening today. Agree. Yeah, but, it's more um, ignorance than anything else. But, I, yeah. but with the Titanic, I mean, of course, the movie was phenomenal. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, the guy that wrote the books I spoke about um, was able to go down in the sub, the first submersible that actually went down to see the Titanic and what it looked like, and it's it's. Um, it is haunting. Um, mm-hmm. the, the, I've, I've watched a lot of the videos that that they've done on it, and they have those. Um, they look like icicles, but they're not icicles. They're they're part of the ship deteriorating, but they look so pretty. Um, and Charlie said that that to be down there, suddenly everything that he'd ever read or written you know, was running through his head and he was seeing it alive and well and on the surface and and it was just a magical time for him. But a sad time. He, he said, you know, that each time he came up from one of the submersible trips that, that you know, there was, a, there was that feeling of depression and sadness that he carried with him mm. because of it. So Not inner peace then. It, it, he didn't have a vibration. Oh, go ahead. No, no, there is still, um, it, it, it is, it is, um, I think it's, it's labeled as a graveyard, very much like the ships that are, um, at the bottom in Hawaii. They're, you know, oh, there's they're a, vibe a there. graveyard for thousands. Of mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah, Pearl Harbor. yeah, I think that, that there, there's, there's a lot going on. I mean, with 9-11, um, I, I there there were they didn't find all the bodies because you know thing people were just ex, in, incinerated but that that ash and everything it, you know it floated in the air for a long time I know we lived um, in Westchester right outside of New York City and and there were a couple of days when ash drifted into our yard and it was mm. horrifying. Mm-hmm. So, I imagine. And you know, we have we have things like this happening and I still don't I don't think we have the full story of it. Mhm. I mean, no, I don't think so I either. understand why it sank. I mean, it was you know, it was ripped and the the water type doors didn't go all the way to the bottom and the water just came in underneath. I understand why it sank. But I don't understand why they why he was rushing so so much to break a record um, when he had all those lives that were at stake, and mm-hmm. it just doesn't make sense to me. How can you put that many lives on the line like that? I I and I don't know that much about the captain. I I know that he had a lot of mishaps with some of his other ships. I know that he was brought out of retirement, and <clears throat> and I know that they they didn't have enough life lifeboats, and they didn't even do a lifeboat drill. So, mm-hmm. you know, people just you know, it was it was an amazing it, it made for an amazing movie, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what do you think, think about the? the um... was, oh, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you real quick, what, what is your impression of the Olympic ship? I know a lot of people were saying there was a switch and that the Olympic was actually the Titanic. I don't know if you've heard about that. Yeah, that, that they switched, that they may have switched the names. It, it was a sister ship. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, yeah, because they had the same but, damage, but apparently. Neither, ne- yeah, and, you know, neither of them were actually seaworthy. I mean, mm-hmm. when you get right down to what they, as far as their their um, lifeboats and and all of the things that they thought would make it see, you know, unsinkable, um, it 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 soured me on going on a cruise for sure. 
because Mm -hmm. these cruise ships that are out there now just don't look seaworthy to me at all. It looks like a good Mm -hmm. stiff wind could knock them over. Right, Um, like everything else. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I wouldn't trust it. Well, some of these beautiful homes, unless they're custom made. Yeah, I mean, it's just made out of paper mache. I mean, they're not even made well. They burn up quickly, as we've seen. Uh, for housing, this and the other, I think a ship is oh, so yeah. different. Poor materials, you know, they're not built the way they used to be. Well, look what's happening. I know in California there are there are certain um, construction materials they can use that are are fire fireproof, mm-hmm. but they aren't really using them all the time. And and then look at is it uh, Iceland that has or Greenland Iceland that has the volcano erupting, and it's going to mm-hmm. wipe out villages. I mean, um, on, on the last um, prediction that I made, um, it was it was that, you know, there there is a lot of chaos coming. And, mm-hmm. and it, it's, a lot of it is, is coming from nature. So that so that it's sort of like, as, as hard as you try, you aren't able to control it or manipulate it, even though even though people have tried. I think that um, it's it's not a controllable aspect of of life anymore. I, I don't think I think that we can try to manipulate um, hurricanes and things like that, but I I don't think we're able to. I really don't. I think nature has a mind of her own, and and um, Anytime somebody tries to stick a finger in it and make it do something that they want it to do, that nature turns around and smacks them in the face. Well, I think the universe has surprises for sure. Cosmos is very interesting that way, which is good. That way mankind doesn't get out of control too much. But, um, yeah, it's just very, very interesting how it's all going. I agree with you, though. Everything's in very intense right now. I see a lot of errors being made by people in just everyday life, um, just sloppiness, scattered Scattered energies. Um, a lot of people are waking up in a red alert kind of energy, like um, adrenalized. So that's going on. I've been getting a lot of that, talking yeah. to a lot of people about that. I don't know if you've had it, but quite a few sensitives and just everyday people. It doesn't even matter if you're psychic or not. Feeling that, you know, waking up, just not right. Okay. Um, so it's definitely there's something afoot, and their their radar is honing in on that. Well, and, you know, it's, I don't think necessarily it has anything to do with extraterrestrials. I think it has a great deal to do with society as a whole. And mm-hmm. that, that as, as information gets to the surface, people step back and say, oh, my God, you've got to be kidding me. And, and it's sort of like people have... have um, manipulated situations to their advantage and thought nothing of it and thought they wouldn't get caught. And and when they're caught, then they're mad because, you know, people expect them to, you know, uh, pay up or fess up or, or go to jail. And they're insulted to think that that's even a possibility. And it's almost mm-hmm. like we have an elite here who don't feel that they can be in any way um, you know, called to make called to make amends for the things that they've done and said. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, there's no accountability. It, it, it boggles my mind. Mm-hmm. Well, the whole system's corrupted. I mean, the whole system. It, it, it's not a good system. It's going to cater to the criminals. So therefore, it's null and void as far as I'm concerned. It has no value. When it's that corrupt, what are you going to do with it? It doesn't serve anyone except for them. And yeah, I agree. There's never been accountability, which is one of the reasons I, I see all this blowback coming in when it comes down to the chaos in motion and, and what's happening here in this country and the world. It's, uh, yeah, it's just no surprise. I mean, it's just no surprise. When, when self-destruct and negativity go full speed ahead, you can expect a situation like this, in my opinion. And it's gotten pretty weird. There's no doubt about that. And even looking at the Titanic, I mean, there were a lot of rich people there, sure. Um, <clears throat> but who wins in the end? Who really benefited from the sinking of the ship? I, you Did know, anybody that's a good question. And, and, Insurance? Well, no, I don't. Well, like that's, Star? that's where I was going to go. I don't know. Was it insured? I mean, it well, must have been, I would say. Yeah, I'm looking at some of the investors. Or wasn't it White Star? Wasn't that part of it or no? 
I think it was the West Star Line, yeah. It seems to me like somebody must have benefited. Somebody did. And I think that's the outcome insofar as what, you know, if you look at things like this, was it an accident or was it something that was really meant to be? And then the gentleman who put out the science fiction book or a book, I don't know if it was science fiction, but it was literally a book pertaining to a ship that sank that had the same exact patterning, um, different name, like skewed a little bit, uh, similar to the Titanic. And he put that book out a long time ago. Yeah, that was put out yeah, which, before the Titanic. Right. Yeah, like a and precursor. I think, almost. I think there was a copy yeah. of it. It was exact, and, and I think it was actually on the Titanic when uh, the Titanic went down. That's weird. <laughs> it, you can't it make does, it up. I'm not trying to laugh it does, in a bad it way. Does, now, it, it is weird in that a lot of things that – are happening have in many ways been foretold either in fiction or I mean you know my old standby look at look at Star Trek with its doors that open and shut and its tri- its flip phones and stuff like that I mean yep. all of that was presented to the public way ahead of time and so when we saw it happening it wasn't you know oh that happened on Star Trek oh yeah that's kind of cool but mm-hmm. so I'm I'm wondering if if indeed, you know, Charlie wrote another book called Dust that that um, that people should actually pay attention to and read. It talks about how the insects start dying out and mm-hmm. how far it goes because it works its way up the food chain. It's a phenomenal book. He's he's an mm-hmm. amazing author, mm-hmm. and um, he also wrote the Family Tomb of Jesus, which is another really good book. Mm -hmm. Um, And he was in on that excavation with um, James Tabor and and, uh, Cameron as well. Mm. Um, And, you know, so, so yeah, it was kind of fun to watch that documentary and suddenly see Charlie and James Tabor and Cameron um, in the documentary on the family tomb of Jesus and um, kind of say, well, I've had a couple of those guys on the show, and I've read those books, and you know, it was mm-hmm. it was um, it was amazing. So I'm wondering if what is what is put out there as fiction, I won't say it's channeling because I don't think the people think they're channeling, but I think they're inspired to write something that is coming, and they just don't know it. Mm-hmm. So it, it makes you kind of look at some of the other fiction books that are out there and wonder if is is this making me ready for something that's going to happen um mm-hmm. right yeah, I, I, think I, the I looked form. somewhere oh. well when you start to think about it i mean you know i i love reading so i'll read just about anything um mm-hmm. but but you know when when you come across a book that like dust that, that basically is talking about the insects dying, and when you know that our our bees are dying, and it it walks it up the food chain because we all depend on that food chain. You know the um, the, the worms that, that get the soil ready, the the bees that pollinate the and and as you go up higher and higher and higher in the food chain, it, it, eventually humanity's there. And, mm-hmm. you know, if we lose our food source, humanity will go down the tubes. There's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. So um, I I would yeah, check out Dust. Dust is a good, that sounds like a good read. Dust is a good book, too. It's a very good read. It's a fictional story. Mm-hmm. But knowing Charlie and all the other stuff he's written, I, I think that, that he definitely um, – he definitely has – a flair for taking what's coming and, and making it into something that um, is is almost, you know, fiction, and yet it's not. Right, like Crichton material. So, yeah. you know, he's, yeah. Well, like like the material you write. I mean, a lot mm-hmm. of your stuff is, is a preparation, you Stop know, it, it, it's preparation for <laughs> what they, for what's coming. Yeah, the one book. Yeah, the one that's written and, as a science fiction is not science fiction, but I had to put it in that category. Yeah. 
because people don't get it, you know, so, so they'll get it that way. Know, well, Slow. I would hope so, because your your oh, books are terrific. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So are yours. Well, ah, well thank you. I, they aren't even in the same um, category. <laughs> Well, they're very advanced and very beyond this realm. There's no doubt about that. I hope people are reading them. Well, we're talking about Charlie Pellegrino. Mm-hmm. He has written the finest book I have ever read that every person out there should read at some point in time in their life. It's called To Hell and Back, The Last Train from Hiroshima. Oh, wow. And he yeah. has interviewed... He has he interviews uh, survivors that, that survived not only the Nagasaki but the Hiroshima bombs, and um, he had um, he had a relative that that, that died at at nine eleven in the Twin Towers, and at some point, some of the survivors from the bombs from Japan came over to the UN to meet with the families of those that had passed and the message that they had was that it, it we have to have peace we have to have love it's the only way we'll ever survive but to hell and back the last train from Hiroshima if you never read a book that I refer to you ever read that book mm. it is an amazing book. He, it's about those that survived and what it was like at the time. Um, I've always been fascinated with all of it, but I've, uh, you know, I've seen the films, I've seen the, you know, what what it looked like and all of that. Until you read this book, you don't know on a personal level what people experienced. Mm-hmm. And right. it was, I, I, I'm not, I, Solaris, you will. And, and, among other things, you will never, ever want to see another one of those bombs go off anywhere. For what it oh, did I'm to sure the people. Yeah, sure. Um, Sounds like an excellent read. It yeah. is. It is. It is a phenomenal read, knowing that he was he was interviewing all these people. So yeah, mm-hmm. Charlie is a remarkable man. Well, what's but, so interesting about all that, that is book should the be. people that deploy that. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say. And people that deploy all those uh, bombs, they go run away, you know. They're planes and underground bases and areas. They're not being hit by anything. They don't have any blowback. There's no accountability, once again. You know, there isn't. And I look at the same thing going on today even with direct energy weapons. It's the same thing. These people have an escape route. They can go underground. They can go into their bases. They can go this, that, and the other. But the people that suffer, you never hear about. So I'm really glad that he's interviewed and, and talked to a lot of people who actually were there witnessed it firsthand. Oh, I mean, he talks about the shadows of people that were literally incinerated, but their shadow was was burned into the building by where they were. Mm. That's amazing. I've seen those. Walking through the, and he talks about um, <clears throat> walking through intersections and having all these little pebbles there and Realizing that the little pebbles are teeth of people that were no longer there, that all that were left were wow. teeth. Um, oh, gee. You've got to read it. <laughs> That's amazing. It's it really an amazing, is amazing. Book. And I Something think else. what's happening is is that that people today don't understand. I mean, they're they're seeing what's happening over in. Um, in the Ukraine and in Gaza, they're seeing man's inhumanity to man. They're seeing horrible things happening. And yet, by the time you get to the newspapers, it's more or less um, the horror is taken out of it. And they just talk mm-hmm. about, you know, they did this and they did that, but not not what happened to the people. Mm-hmm. And I think they're taking... They're taking the personal out of it so people are not defected enough to not do it anymore. Right. I just... Um, yeah, I think so. 
I'm to the point where I'm, I'm to the point where um, there has to be. I mean, soldiers are doing what soldiers are told to do, unfortunately. But <clears throat> but but you get you get people that get carried away and they do things that are horrible. You get these mobs that are doing things all over the place. In many cases, a lot of the mob riot things, they don't even know what they're they're rioting for. They're just out mm-hmm. there to, you know, have a good time and break some windows and, and steal some stuff. So, yeah, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, yeah. I, in a society, society is just losing society. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're definitely going and, inverted. And it's a little crazy. Um, well, it's more than crazy. It's a psych war. You know, I, I, I look back <laughs> on when I was in the fifth and sixth grade, and my mother would say to us in the summertime, come back when the street lights go on. Mm-hmm. No parent in their right mind would say that to their kids today. Mm-hmm. I mean, I my grandchildren are attached to their father and mother uh, with Life 360 so that they, everybody knows where everybody is all the time. And that's appropriate mm-hmm. with as crazy as it is. Um, mm-hmm. And with with people coming into society, which is on the downswing any time, who have no morals, who have no, no, I mean, people are getting killed for nothing. I mean, I know. It's, it's just it's frightening. Mm-hmm. And and I just sit back and all I can think of is how bad can it get? And all I hear is just wait and see. It's going to get a lot worse. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's it's sort of like you know, will we actually have roving bands of of looters or whatever? I mean, high probability I hate to think it would happen, but yeah. Well, and, considering and how much is going, what's going is, on, yeah. But well, there are millions of people that have come into this country right. that had no intention of, of, you know, anything other than um, getting a better way of life for themselves. And for the most part, it's it's single men. It's not. It's there are families, of course, but. The preponderance are single men, army age mm-hmm. type men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's not an accident. I, I heard somebody, I heard somebody say, you know, it's it's one of the most successful invasions ever happened in history. We, we welcome them. We welcome them in. We give them money. We give them lodging. We give them medical. We give them cell phones. And they're here to invade us and turn around and take us over. I mean, that's mm-hmm. stupid. <laughs> it's stupid, it's negligent, it's um, criminal, and it's being allowed by every single occupant and district of criminal right now. So putting, putting that into perspective, they didn't just come over here because, you know, somebody allowed this, somebody gave them the uh, green light to do so, and we know who those people are and what departments they're in and how many have stood down. We don't have a military anymore. I mean, that's what I've said before. This country is gone, and what's left of it is is the laughingstock to the world, whether they acknowledge it or not. I don't care how much they try to praise NASA or praise SpaceX or anybody else. They are done as a country. And if this is what they wanted, if they hated Trump that bad, they want to bring this, this country down this low, I don't know what to say anymore because it's down pretty bad. And people don't see it every day. They're not being hit yet. But believe me, they will be. And I think you're right. You know, the, the worst is coming. The worst is coming. And it's going to be something that I don't think anybody oh, yeah. wants to really live to see, to be honest with you. It's going to be nasty. And, and I'm, try, I'm not trying to throw shade and doom and doom, but it's just an analysis. Well, it is. And, and you know, I, I'm in a very small state, and um, I, I haven't seen as much as people who are on the border have seen. But – but in looking at the numbers that are being released and put all, see, this is what gets me. They are now being scattered all over the country so that, so that they're in place for when the call comes to uprise. 
you know, the whole country will be uprose. It, <laughs> right. Well, when you think about it, where I'm at, you know, it's liber- it's liberal central. I mean, and we have a huge invasion in uh, areas. We have a huge, huge influx of what I call criminals. Not good people trying to find work, not good people with good ethics. Um, very, very nasty. Okay. And the police don't care. Let me put that in perspective. They're not the cops of the old days. We don't have that type of police anymore. Well, what I don't understand is that not too long ago they talked about 800 FEMA camps that were all over the country. And above and beyond that, there were the camps that the Japanese were put into in World War II, still functional. Why haven't they been put in those camps to be processed? And, and, I mean, the camps would hold thousands and thousands of people. They wouldn't be loose on the streets. And mm-hmm. people could be processed and, and either sent back to their country of origin or released appropriately into the country. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it makes sense. We have, to, we have these camps out there. There's well, that's logical, but then they'd say, oh, they're in concentration camps. <laughs> they try to say they were probably being imprisoned. You know, there's always this thing where they, it's like a humanitarian thing where, oh, they're in a camp, you know, they're, uh, they'll compare it to something out of World War II more than likely. But no, I agree with you 100%. They don't use their brains. There's, there's no logic here in the United States anymore. The intellect has gone out the, w- the window. It's floated away somewhere, so unfortunately. But, yeah, I just see the output is going to be nasty. And unless they have a, a rocket that's going to take them to another destination in D.C., they're all screwed. An underground base is not going to secure them. They've created a huge, huge monster out of control. And it's it's no good. It's just no good. This country is suffering. And yet they're giving them tons and tons of cash. I mean, it's just no good. These people don't belong here. Sorry. Not right now. Okay. I mean, they don't like... I mean, they they didn't like the food they were given, so they're given a five hundred dollar or five thousand dollar I don't know which it was credit card to get their own food and cook their own food. Now you know, well, you know, I mean, if you gave me, you know, if you gave me a credit card with that much on it, chances are I wouldn't go buy food. <laughs> well, no it kidding, they're be. not going to buy. They're buying well, new cars, new here. iPhones. Right, I, as far as I understand, New York City was was giving them ten thousand a month. That's that's every month, ten grand. And as I said before, I can do a lot with ten thousand dollars a month as an American, right? So I think a lot of Americans out there are very resentful. Gotcha. Uh, we never had the American dream; it was swept away and stolen from us. And those of us who have worked very hard to get up to middle class or upper middle class have gone down to poverty right now. So thank you, DC, for nothing. Simply as that. Simply stated. Well, you know, I always said that I was low middle class, not low class, but low middle class, but they did mm-hmm. away with the middle class. <laughs> I mean, yeah, now it's so poverty. I'm upper lower class now. Yeah. Well, I used to be upper middle class I mean, middle class. I'm... Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> no, and after their, their induction in 2004 and a lot of other stuff, and, you know, I don't sit there and cry over stuff. I just keep going. But the problem is we keep getting swept away by criminal activity under the guise of D.C., and it's not okay. It's simply not okay. And if this is the way they want to roll, and I said it before, then district of criminal has to be obsolete. It has to go. It has to be, we have to create something else. This is not working for this country anymore. And the military has stood down and allowed it to happen, no, it, along with Homeland Security and a bunch of other departments. But it, it's true. And, and you know, it's, it's not like we didn't have places we could have put them. I mean, I'm not they sure there's many here. millions of people, but... Let's put it that way. Well, I they think really if, don't people, here. If, no offense. if people knew... Go ahead. If they knew they were going to be going to a camp instead of turned loose in the country, it would have cut immigration down dram- dramatically. Mm-hmm. And, and if oh, you sure. didn't have grounds for being here, you were sent back to your country. It was that easy. Um, well, and, and I agree with you. I well, just, let's put it this uh, you know, I, and, way. And May D.C. Of... have the life they deserve. Because we're not going to be here forever. Whoa. And what they've created is, is something they can't fix. 
they cannot fix this anymore. And they want to, they want to, if they want to destroy America, congratulations. Um, but there's something else coming around the corner, I think, that's going to annihilate them. So that's just my own intuitive hit on this. This is this game isn't over. If this is the way they want to play with sabotaging the United States, it's going to be with a big price and not at the cost of the American people or collateral damage of the American people. It's going to be something else connected to them. So I, like I said before, unless they have a real magical escape route to another destination off world, they're screwed. They're screwed. And so are their children and their grandchildren and their legacies. I mean, these people in D.C. who have been basically fixtures in, in there have families. They have ancestors here. I have news for them. They're not going anywhere. They're done after this, after this negligent move. And not to mention, don't get me started, because I know we're probably going to have a problem broadcasting this. But I will say, you have all these people going to Cuba now. Um, <laughs> we, have, we have these gals going to Cuba over there in Congress. Where do they get off going to Cuba? And, and propagating all kinds of crazy when they're part of Congress, or they, sh- they shouldn't even be in Congress. I, I don't know if you've heard about all that, the squad part. Where do they get off going to Cuba and, and start fighting for the Cubans? What the hell is going on with this country, really? What, what exactly is this? A UN crazy episode is what it is. It's, it's United Nations completely infiltrating well, this country. I don't think that we can fight anywhere, to be honest with you. I think we've depleted our army and, and our uh, supplies. And when China goes to take over Taiwan, we will not be able to stop it. And, and when they were talking about a ceasefire in, in Israel, that's not happening. And the Ukraine, mm-hmm. he'll keep going. He'll keep going until he has all of it back. Um, and we're sending somebody, I heard somebody say something that I, I really laughed at. We're going to let the war keep going on in the Ukraine because we are destroying all of Russia's armament so that that Russia won't be able to go to war against us. Now, is that stupid? Yeah. I don't know which one spewed that out, but yeah. (laughs) Well, you know, one thing is the aerial warfare. That's that's the game board. It's, It's space platforms right now. It's low Earth orbit. It is. The dominance of space, that's really the weapon of war. Everything we're seeing here is a joke and a decoy as far as I'm concerned. Even the stuff going down over there with Ukraine, this, that, and the other, and it's true. They're giving them all this money. They're playing back and forth. They're bantering back and forth. The big, big power lies in space, and they know this. But they're not going to make it either out there. And and all it takes is a a few satellites to go south, and, man, the whole system breaks. It's going to be a chain reaction. I don't care what anybody says. So that's their weapon. If they can't, if they don't have real, you know, boots on the ground, they're going to go with the aerial warfare, which I know that they use very clearly. I mean, the, the, the electronic warfare and everything else that they're doing, but that stuff is going to go too. And then what? You have chimpanzees with sticks and stones fighting wars, people running their mouths. DC will more than likely get imploded. Um, they'll hide out in their underground bases for only so long until they run out of oxygen or whatever else. I know they have plenty of food and things, uh, but eventually the universe comes for them in a different formula. So. I know we've gone to, well, this is the Titanic sinking, and now it's called something else. <laughs> and now, now that you have, now we're sinking. But I, I think oh. I think it's it's important to talk about it because oh, it that is. is is what appears to be happening. And yeah, it's a mirror image of the Titanic, actually. You know, you. Well, it is, and you know, we're taking on water for sure because. Sure. We we want it to be it, we want it to be like it used to be, and it will never ever be that way again. Nope. And the children and, won't have an opportunity I've, I've, to I've have. Told, Go ahead. No, I, I I've told the story before about the girl at the grocery store said, "Well, now that things are getting better, we can go back to normal." And I looked at her and I said, "Look around. This is the normal now. It's not going to go back anywhere. It's going to just you know it, it may." St- plateau for a while but it's it's not going any it's not going back anywhere it's going forward and it's going to get more difficult um mm-hmm. i have i have two grandchildren who are college age my god i can't imagine what the future holds for them i just can't not unless they live it off planet they don't have a future as far as i can tell <clears throat> excuse me i think the, the, i've always said it before the breakaway societies and civilizations are where it's at and i'm not talking the one percent rich people and the musk family i'm talking people beings who are star people what i consider the star families to leave 
And we don't we don't belong here anyway. I mean, I can go on and on about our cosmic origins, but the bottom line is we enter on this timeline. We live here. We dwell here. But we don't have to stay here. We should have lived off planet a long time ago. This is the problem we run into. And now that they're trying to weaponize space to such a degree, they're trying to stop everybody from exiting out. And I'm not talking physically dying. I'm saying moving to another destination, which I know we, can, we are capable of doing um, beyond Star Trek. So that's what I'm looking at. You know, who gets to survive off planet is really the question. Who gets to live off planet? Because here is a... I don't want to say the S, S show, but it really is a disaster in motion. And, and I don't see a future for these children. I do not see a future for these children. Under, as, you know, looking at what's going on here, hell no. There's no way they can have a good future here. Not with artificial intelligence, not with their version of artificial intelligence, because it's not an off-world intelligence program. It's, it's skewed, and it's, it's completely marked with all kinds of propaganda and bias activity. It's just insane. No, that's true. And, it, you know, it... I used to think, well, maybe if you just sent the children off-world, they might stand a chance. But the reality is they're already indoctrinated. They're already no, they're not. programmed. Yeah. And honestly, you can clone. It's just as easy as so, having children. So, yeah, you don't, need, you don't really need children. I hate to say it like that. But I was, was kind of weirded out about people constantly having kids because I, there's a cloning procedure that they use, in my opinion, off-planet that it's not necessary to have children. But, yeah, I mean, here it's like they're undoctrinated. It reminds me of that uh, Star Trek episode where the kids hated hated uh, Captain Kirk, and it was like bonk, bonk on the head, and they're all there circling him and attacking him. Do you remember that episode? <laughs> I know Mark would be, Mark probably remembers it, but it's just that idea of the, you know, kids. No, you know, they're not the answer. They have to be, they have to be educated properly, as you know, and that's not happening, okay? It's just not. So No, it's not. And more and more, we're finding that that the children that are coming up have so many problems. Um, oh, they're messed up. You know, as far yeah. as social, you know, social involvement. I mean, they they, they have such issues that are that, that that begs for different forms of education, which we're not supplying, and you know, sacral cranial work and all sorts of stuff. It's it's just not there, and so they're they're not capable of dealing with school the way you and I dealt with school. I didn't do that well with it, so of course I became a teacher, but um, which I've always felt was a big joke because I hated going to school, and then I ended up teaching. Um, but but you know trying but trying to teach in a way that 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 the kids would learn and enjoy themselves mm-hmm. and and even then you know it, it was limited but but now oh my goodness now what has happened to the education programs we have out there it's just frightening and the best education you could get would be um school taught home home taught you know homeschooling mm-hmm. but only if your parent knows something you know so right. many of the the people out there, you know, have been, have been skewed anyhow. So, you know, it's mm-hmm. all it's all a matter of of where where is the truth? The truth the truth is in books, and so many kids today don't like to read. It's it's very sad. Um, no, they read in the iPhones. So. You know, you, no, I agree. It's social engineering. That's all it is. It's interactive playtime. It's it's a video game. Well, there are whole studies out there that show that you know parents think, you know, putting the kid in the in the little walkie thing and have putting it in front of the TV is a way of keeping them occupied. It's a way of keeping them hypnotized. But mm-hmm. but everything they see is is going to, especially when they're very very young, they're going to absorb it and think this is what reality really is, and it's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's unfortunate. Um, no, I agree. It's, it's very concerning, but at the same time, you know, what do you do with it? It's non-productive. It's um, non-functional. I mean, there's so many levels to it. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. And the fact that it's being allowed, but you know what? The masses allowed this. We didn't. Beings like us stood up against it, but the majority are just sheep uh-huh. slept. They're allowing it to happen, and this is going to be the outcome. It's not going to be pretty. And I don't want to hear them crying at the last minute when they see the ship go down like the Titanic. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Well, yeah, you coulda, woulda, shoulda, right? And it is that same scenario over and over again. I get frustrated with it as well. Well, you look at it and you think, okay, 
you and I were indoctrinated to to a degree, but that there was also the room for us to go outside of that and pick up other stuff that contradicts it or makes it, you know, clearer. Mm-hmm. So right. that you and I were not prevented from learning pieces of the truth. Did we learn it all? No. But we learned enough to know what is and isn't true. And and today's generation doesn't have that option. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Which is unfortunate. So if they know, can't they get have... anywhere, they're going to be running in place for the rest of their lives. You know, it's like being on a treadmill to nowhere. It is sad. But we, you know, like I said, we have been lied to as generation after generation globally, not just in one country. And it's now you're seeing the blowback of, uh-huh. of the truth really does hurt society. When you don't tell the truth, it hurts the mass collective on so many levels. It really does. And now, you know, Google wants to run the world and they want to sanitize and censor everybody or some other platform or people in D.C. or wherever, whatever country or state. It doesn't matter anymore. It's always about sanitization of information. And, and that has to end yesterday. The universe doesn't play that card. Only here do they do this stupid stuff. You know, it made no, makes no sense at all. And, of course, before the Internet, we were all independent in thought. We weren't, we weren't being looked at because we weren't there to be looked at and data mined. Uh-huh. Well, now it's everywhere. Well, you got, Cell you phones, got dragged you know. in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just, when, when you look at it, it's, it's sort of like I never relied on cell phone the way as much as I do today. Um, mm-hmm. It's easier to ask the cell phone something than to actually go find it myself. But and and mm-hmm. even when you do, um, what what's out there on the internet now, like Wikipedia, who writes Wikipedia? I mean, it's you're already old? skewed. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's I don't pay attention I mean, to I'm a lot thinking... of it. You have to take it with a grain of salt. It's basically like one of those little black balls. That you shake up and it gives you an answer, but you don't really know if it's a good answer or not. I mean, it's that kind of a thing at this point in space time. You either know or you don't. I think encyclopedias are still good, um, the original ones. Um, oh, the magic and, you know, you can find, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. You know, you're just literally thrashing well, around I, on the Internet. You don't know what you're getting. I just, um, I, I'm going to do, did you know that you and or I could could write a Wikipedia page and put it up? Let's do it. I don't know. I'm, if really, I'm writing. A I'm sure I have one page. out there by some jackass. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a Wikipedia page for my deck of cards. Oh, wonderful! Well, I think that's fabulous. And and, and you know, get that out there, and only because I think it's it's important that people understand how it came about and what its purpose is and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But um, I think I think that that it behooves us to try to put information. You know, information has always been out there. It's a matter of you know, are you going to grab it and read it and make it a part of your reality, or are you going to ignore it? And I think that we still have the option of putting the information out there um, until some some smartass goes goes out and says, let's clean up you know, the internet and get rid of those things that don't don't apply to our platforms. I mean that's already that been going on. Come. It has been going on. My my first website got completely trashed. It got hacked. I had to go over to another platform, um, have my website it's not the website initially that I worked on for over ten years. It's it's okay, but it's not the other website. But but you know, you see how many videos they've taken over there on YouTube of mine and this and the other. I've I've been through that sanitization and censorship uh, a billion fold. And I find more and more that they are doing that. They are taking people's data down and, and very important interviews are being disappeared. You know, uh, people that I've interviewed that have a lot of credibility uh, gone because somebody's getting triggered. Well, yeah. Right. So, yeah, well, I have a big problem. That's with why that. I, what, what I have found is strangely enough, blog talk isn't doing it. So that's good. whatever, Whatever platforms Blog Talk puts it on, it's still out there. And mm-hmm. that's why, you know, I, I have um, YouTube and I have Rumble. Um, 
and I have talk stream live. You know, I I I put things out there as much as I can, so that hopefully some of it will survive. I did mm-hmm. find that when you stop paying for blog talk after a certain period of time, they do start taking your things down. Hmm. Here I thought it so would money, be out money. there forever, but no, that's not the. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's good I, to I know. I forget what what show. What show is it that that has that the song "Money, Money, Money Makes the World Go Round"? The world go round. Uh, um, that was a song with Liza Minnelli. I know that. And it's, yeah, I can't it's remember that, now. Cabaret. Was that cabaret? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm just thinking about that song that was what they sang it in there. If I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah, that's I just, an old one. Though. I remember hearing a song, and it's a very old one, of course. But um, it it does it does resonate to me it's it's kind of like okay how do you how do you i thought that if we did radio shows and stuff like that that it would float on the ether forever and that's not the truth yeah um well this ether it floats in the universe someday, you know. <laughs> but go ahead but when you stop and say i mean youtube hopefully will keep things out there but mm-hmm. maybe not you know, I, no. it, it's just. Isn't that sad? That I don't know what I'm on the internet. Well, I think it's good you are. It's archives. They're time capsules of information. That's what I've always called them. But in my opinion, whenever we go live on the radio, we're going into the field beyond the field anyway, initially. Um, you know, there's the Ethernet. There's this net. There, there's a lot of things. There's multiversal frequencies. There's all kinds of data codes that float around that they can't control even if they want to. But I do see at some point when when this particular Internet, because they have their own, they don't need this Internet. This is for the people normally, um, and then for them to Uh monitor the people. So you're dealing with a different Internet. Um, So when they take this one down that really is just something that everybody uses here on this realm, then they'll still have their Internet. They'll still have their underground tech. It's not going to go anywhere, right? It's just going to be this particular window that's going to shut down. And with that comes all of everything else is going to go black too, in my opinion. So I see that coming. Yeah, I do. Uh, and then something else might reboot at some point in space well, time, it, but it, well, you know, it's it's just um, what I have found fascinating is over the last fifteen years, when I started podcasting, <clears throat> there weren't a lot of people out there podcasting. Mm-hmm. Right. And now, even even on um, well, some of the newscasters, they have podcasts now too. Right. Which, yeah, which I do. find fascinating. You know, I think it's hysterical. They're on television all the time. Yeah. Well, they're on they're on television all the time, mm-hmm. and then they go to a podcast, not to radio, but to podcast. So they can speak freely, perhaps. So, you Who know, knows? Yeah, it's interesting. I have it really is. No idea. Well, I can tell you point because blank. When I was out, podcasting, they weren't there. Well. Podcasting is definitely something that, you know, radio is gone. Right. Um, well, the only time I turned a radio cool. on is when. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, you're talking so radio, F- a- you know, FM well, radio. Or regular internet AM, radio. AM, FM radio, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Well, no, not not, inter- not internet, just radio, radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. It, it, it's just, it, everything has shifted. And, you know, it, I find it hysterical because when I hear a newscaster say, or oh, you could catch me on my podcast, um, you know, it's like, you've got to be kidding me. I know. Um, it's where, where, it's saturated. Where once it was a very, oh, yeah. It was a bold and move, anybody actually, can have a podcast. initially. Yeah, it's basically watered down to yeah. such a degree. It's, it's overkill. Now there's so many podcasts out there that the quality of real good radio shows gets overlooked by the imbeciles that are out there. And, you know, I've seen that happen, you know. And I was out here originally, too, a long time ago before anybody and their mother had any of anything going on with the Internet. My goodness, no one would touch my case or my information, you know, back in the day. And now everybody and their mother's all over the map with stuff. So it is interesting to see how that is. But I think there's a decline also in the integrity of, of the information in some of the podcasts. Obviously not ours, but others. 
And that just waters it all down. It makes it look like garbage. You know, once again, there's so many, it just becomes a molecule in a microwave. So, yeah, just, I think well, everything's you know, getting oversaturated. I'm getting to a point where, um, you know, I, I did blog talk, and then I took a lot of the stuff over to YouTube. And then when YouTube started to be finicky, I went over to Rumble, and I'm wondering mm-hmm. what is the next step? Where is the next? And it's it's it's, it's amazing because there are thousands of podcasts here that I've got, and where do mm-hmm. I put them that they'll survive the next um, the next swarm of right. you know of of being censored? Well, um, I think Odyssey is and, and your, Odyssey has my show. Yeah, right. No, I would definitely Odyssey. look at Odyssey. That's right. You told me about Odyssey. Yeah, I did. And and that's the one that I have everything cloned over there. I, I'm not very interactive with it. I just don't have time. But I, at least it's a backup on the Internet. You know, I have all my other files. I, I mean, I have my own exterior archives and something other, but I don't put anything else out there. I just don't have time to sit there and put it on every platform, but I did use them for a backup system for now. Because everything is getting wiped out. It's getting yeah, sanitized. Wow. And I'm fed up with it, quite honestly. You know, it's like stealing. You're stealing from my life. You're stealing a piece of my life every time you take something down. It's as simple as that. You know, that's what they do. They're thieves. That's my property, my data, my information, well, my time capsule. Leave it alone. Well, it, it used to be that um, there was no censorship. <coughs> now there's censorship. Yeah. I mean, we have we have stayed away from what will get us pulled, but, um, you know, it's a little scary. Well, everybody is on a list of some kind, but they're on a list too. So I always look at it, the door swings both ways. That's one thing, that they're being watched like they try to watch <laughs> everybody else, that there's a file on them just like they put a file on everybody else, and that they have an expiration date just like they're trying yeah. to expedite everybody else's death. So there you go. Two-way doors, always. But, you know, <coughs> it is still to make it right what they're doing. Ah. There's no doubt about that. I just drank some water too. Well, I... I think, yeah, (laughs) I think what's going on, unfortunately, is that there are um, bots that go through and look for certain words, and if they find enough Mm -hmm. of them, they censor it. And and I think sometimes they're censoring, they're censoring things that don't need to be censored. Mm -hmm, Of course. But look at, look at, you know, Disney cartoons. Look what they did to Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I haven't seen that recently. What happened? It became I mean, woke and weird. What? Well, they they redid Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs with with live people, and the dwarfs are all races, all creeds, all shapes and mm-hmm. sizes. Mm-hmm. Naturally. So what so, color is the white girl? I, I and <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. she is Snow what color white, is the white know? girl? Snow White is. Well, I have yes, no she's idea. Somebody else. You know, this is what I mean by trying to be but not politically it, correct, but biased against white people. Okay? It's very strange. Very strange. Well, and, and with sleep, with Sleeping Beauty, um, they they censored that. I love this. They censored it because he kissed her without her permission. <laughs> oh, brother. You know what? Disney, you know, the original so, Disney would just flip out. He'd flip in his grave. I don't know if he's actually, isn't he frozen? Isn't he in some kind of a freeze? Cryogenics or something? I, yeah, I think so. With Walt Disney. I, now, that's that's interesting. I would like to look into that and see where he's at right now and see what's going on with him. Because I find if you're an eccentric and you're a billionaire, I think freezing um, cryogenics is cool. I really do. I don't know why. I just think it's interesting. And if I had had the money when my dog passed, I probably would have done the same thing for him. What do you suppose happens consciously? Consciously, when the body is frozen or the brain is frozen, I find that the consciousness can what, go outside the happened? body. Okay. Yeah. I mean, to me, it seems like so even I'm wondering. The stages of some kind. Go ahead. Well, yeah. If you're in a coma, your 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 awareness is out traveling around doing whatever. Right. But um. But does it doesn't bring the memory of that travel back when it wakes up, which is not fair. 
I don't think um, it does. I would think somehow, some way, it does get integrated in one of the energy, um, some part of the energy field in the electromagnetic field, some part of the body. But you know what comes to mind when people are in a stasis, whether it, whatever stasis it is. Remember we were, we were discussing um, Halls of Amente, and you know how he's in one area and he's projecting uh-huh. himself into the cosmos. I mean, it's the same concept, right? So you have an anchoring system of a bio suit or a body in a stasis, whether it's through cryogenics or maybe some people are in comas. But you get out of it, and you can navigate and traverse and come back with the data, integrate it back in. I just think, I just find that that's um, an interesting thing. Uh, I'm not saying it's for everybody, but it's like it's like traversing the galactic highway. Say we're in stasis chambers when we're going in between um, space time. I mean, that's, there's other ways to traverse, but that's one way of doing it. And you still have all your main, you have your memories, you understand everything. You're calibrated to such a level that you'll understand and integrate the data properly when you awaken officially in your in your body. So. I don't know. It's just something I look at. I think outside the perimeter of here and, and the potential of what we can do and knowing what I know, and I'm sure you know too, it's like, what the hell are we wasting our time with this garbage for? And these idiots <laughs> thinking they can control us. You know, it's just like enough. Get them away from me. Get them as far away from me as you can is really where I'm at. Every bit of it. But aren't we learning? Everything. Aren't we learning? I'm not learning anything. Aren't we learning something? <laughs> I think they're learning. I well, think we taught them. We taught the Defense Department. My data educated half of their people in their Defense Department about synthetic telepathy, psychotronic warfare. They didn't know crap. These kids were in diapers when I was inducted. I mean, think about it. Think about all the information we've shared, all your wisdom, all your knowledge. They've learned from you. Heaven forbid you're smarter than they are, right? Well, I hate to tell them, but the best AI they can come up with is still ignorant. So good luck and good riddance as far as I'm concerned. No, you know, it's just I need to get away from them. They're not my species. And I've said it before, um, you know, one of these days everybody's going to realize that. They're like, wow, man, they are the cancer that nobody wanted. I think they should know that. That's true. Maybe the big mirror should show up and show them that this is what you've done. This is who you are. And now you need to crack that mirror and walk away. Now we're getting into another world. Well, I don't think they (laughs) – <clears throat> well, I don't think I don't think they they will admit that. But you know, I, it, it does it come does it come down to the fact that we are an experiment that didn't work, and we have to kind of be shoved, shoved, shoved off, and and the experiment started again. Oh, you know what? I don't consider humanity. myself an experiment at all. I think that I was pulled into an experimental project, but no, I'm not the experiment. I think they are. I think, you know what that reminds me of that movie, um, gosh, which one was it, where he says, um, I'm not in the prison with you, you're in the prison with me. It's that kind of thing. They're the ones that are really trapped. We're not. So I think they're the experiment gone wrong. They're the ones that had an opportunity to learn and grow from all of this, and they decided to weaponize everything and, and misdirect energy and information instead. They've abused their privilege of having access to incredible amounts of clearances and technology. We have big corporations who have misused the privilege of being in those positions of CEO and, and that's the stuff that I'm talking about. They're the problem, and they are they are the cancers, and they were the experiment, and they've gone bad, you know, as far as I can tell. It's not us. We haven't done anything wrong. I know that. You know, we, we tell the truth. We communicate the truth. And if somebody's doing something wrong, we stand up and say something. What's wrong with that? You know, do you remember the old days when they say, see something, say something? Yeah, we're saying a lot, and we're getting censored for doing so, right? Insanity. Yeah, that's true. No, I agree with you. Mark's cracking but, yeah, me up over here. Sometimes <laughs> I think if he, if he was cracking. cracking. Hi, Mark Eddie. Eddie. <laughs> I said Eddie. Oh. <clears throat> Hold on. Go ahead. I, I'm I, sorry. I really, I, some, I sometimes feel like I'm just an observer, a watcher. You and, are. And, you know, I put it, I, you know, I put information out there that can help people, but you know, it's a matter of who's going to grab onto it, who's going to, and if it helps people, that's great. But, but I'm I'm more of a watcher, and and the more I step back and take a look at what's happening, the more amazed I am that we have survived as long as we have. Um, yeah. You know, we have that's the capability of we have the capability of destroying the planet. And well, sooner or later, yeah. some idiot is going to throw the switch. Well, there's always a, yeah, I know, but then there's a, 
universal waves that are coming in that I think are just going to eradicate mankind at some point in space time. The people who want to be the winners of this war, who are the ones who are actually created it, are the ones that are going to go first. So in my opinion, there's extinction for them. That we don't need any more of that. We don't need it in the cosmos. We don't need it in families or generations of it. We don't need it. And, and, in, and I don't need to be clear to everybody. Everybody knows. If you know, you know who and what we're talking about. Because obviously there are perpetrators out there who have been the problem and not the solution on this realm. And those are the ones I'm talking about. So it, it's an ugly uh-huh. scenery. And, and, you know, I would have loved to have been living my life in the illusion of living, at least living it out as, as nice and as peacefully as I could before I exited out of here. And unfortunately, it's been nothing but a drama bubble because of them. And I'm not just talking singular. I'm talking for the masses, for the children. Uh, people have grown up with PTSD since the 2020 Psy War shut down. I can go on and on about the games being played out, like why the CIA laughs about it, or why somebody in Space Force laughs about their access to electronic warfare that makes people hear voices in their head. Let me tell you that you're fired beyond the word and you're not welcome in the cosmos, okay? If you want me to call your name out, I will. Um, this is what I mean, Barbara. I get livid when I know so much and I know who these people are and what they do and what they've done and how there's no accountability as they think, but there is accountability. That's the thing. There is accountability, but I'll tell you what, you take their toys away and it's like, let's level the playing field with you now. Let's level the playing field with Space Force and everybody else. And you have no more toys. You have no more access to space. And tell me how it works for you. Tell me how it works for you, SpaceX, when you stop being able to access and launch what you want to launch. You tell me how that's going to work for you. And I, and I recall these companies out right now and these corporations because I'm very clear on what they're doing behind the scenes that nobody knows about under the guise of national security. I'll say no more. Because I know your yeah, show okay. won't go up on YouTube anyway. But nonetheless, <laughs> heaven forbid I talk covert technology I think we're... and it gets sanitized. Well, you <laughs> so know, we started it's, off with the Titanic. So if you, if and you... the ship's just thinking. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, come on. I mean, it was a ship that sank. And so if you could have the power to go back to any time frame you wanted to to live in, where would you go? Well, you know what's really interesting? Looking at this realm and looking at this world and appreciating the ones I loved while I was here and the animals, the interaction, and everything I've accomplished in my own realm, I have to say, I, I would never come here ever. Uh-huh. I, would have, I would have never allowed myself to enter onto the timeline period. Had I known what this was going to create, I probably would have been better off living in another space-time configuration initially and never having to enter here ever, ever. And that's really sad. It's a very sad thing to say. Like some people say, well, I'd rather live in this timeline or that, that decade. Or No, I would have said, no, I should have never come. It's been a mistake. I would go back. Seriously, I know it sounds bad. I would go back to Pangea. I would go back to when it was all one continent, when when there was one people, there was one language, there was one spiritual observance, where where everybody was at the same place at the same time. That's very beautiful. I would, I, I would, I would go back then because the wisdom teachers were here then, and it, and then you know. The, the the crust broke and everybody drifted off, but I would like to go back to that time frame where there was no war because there was no need for war. There was, you know, mm-hmm. and everybody spoke the same language, and we were all one. And I, that's that's really what we're striving for, um, striving for hard now, but mm. that's where I. That's pretty. You know, that's where I would. You know, I, I would want to go back to that time where the animals could talk to us, where where we, you know, had the gnomes and elves and fairies, and they all worked with the with with the Earth Mother, and you know, where it was one. Mhm. I would like to. That's experience. beautiful. Obviously, you've I experienced bored, it before, but uh, so um, I don't think you get bored because you know you're oh, yeah. one of those who traverses too. You're a, you're a traveler, so. You know, we're not we're not from here. I know you know that. I mean, even how many lifetimes you had here, it doesn't matter. I think that's beautiful, though. There are certain areas on this this um, area. This I call it the terraform rock, but there are places I really love. Uh, I have a resonance with. But I, I tell you that nothing nothing beats being in the arms of creation for me. And I know what that feels like. That centeredness, that peace, that bliss, which is 
you can't even describe it. And the only way I've ever found it is to be engaged with, with the cosmos, the way I know how to interface beyond the technology. Uh-huh. So, you know, when I look at it here, what, what am I going back to a memory, a memory or a time capsule from another timeline or a, a possible lifetime? I find that all the things you're describing exist in another configuration of space time. Those don't, don't die. They keep ascending and evolving as we all do. But unfortunately that, that which is ascending like beings like us who have ascended and are ascending still with evolution, you're seeing a lot of people here who aren't. I mean, the mass collective is going in reverse. They're literally imploding at the DNA sequencing level. And that's a concern. Now, whether it's done by design through a lot of the psi war that's been going on with this manufactured bioweapon or anything else, these people are going in, in reverse. And I don't have a reverse in my drive. I have zero to 60 and beyond, <laughs> and no reverse, and no breaks. Okay, so, you know, don't like going backwards. These people are completely backwards. But it can be oh, a beautiful place. Um, it's unfortunate. But, but the rich people, I think if they were poor, maybe they wouldn't be such jerks. Maybe they'd have to struggle a little more. You know, maybe it's not every day I have the money to buy out the world. Maybe maybe they should be broke for a while. I said this before. Maybe all these trillionaires should be bankrupt. Maybe all their bank accounts should go to everybody else. They want to give money to the people coming over the border. Give it to every American. Every American should be a billionaire tomorrow. You know what? Let's give your let's give your bank accounts to us, and we'll take it from here. Okay? Because you've done a, a nasty job. Thank you very much. And I'm on a rant. <laughs> But it's true. Uh, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. If that, I, in the I, end, they're I all in the water, that, Barbara, just like the Titanic. Think about it. Think about the rich. Some survive, but in the end, they're all in the water, and the ship's going down. Yeah, and, and with it, it's history, and we'll never really know the true history. That's what's really so mm-hmm. so strange. Unless you're an we'll eyewitness. Never really know. Right. I mean, <clears throat> Yeah. And you're a sacred witness. And, I'm I mean, a sacred I know witness. that I. Well, I know that I have drowned a number of times. I, I'm not saying I was on the Titanic. I have no idea if I was or not. But I know that that is a fear I have. And mm-hmm. and even though I can swim, and stuff like that, but um, drowning is definitely not something I would prefer not to do. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we're a Pisces too. You know, I. Oh yeah. <laughs> Which is interesting is water definitely, element, right? So. Oh, I have to be near it, but I don't have to be in it. That's how I am. Um, I live on Maui. I hardly, I, I, I hardly swim. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, wait, when you were in Maui, you didn't go. You no, didn't I said when I lived on Maui. I used to run on the beach all the time, but I rarely, I rarely went in the water. It's like the, it's like Jaws, you know, like Chief Brody. I hardly ever went into the yeah. water. I'd wade a little bit, but most of the time I just run, run along the beach or bike. I loved it, but I, I really didn't like to, to go in the water that much. Um, and I'd see things, I'd see energetic things, but that was, that was being interconnected with a lot of tech back then too. But I would see all kinds of stuff, uh, and I just, did, I preferred to stay, um, stay away from it as much as I could, even though I love it. I get that. Well, you know, I think it's something that that most people have never experienced. You know, they see pictures of the water, but they have no idea as to what the power of of the water and the wind truly mm-hmm. are. Um, one summer, um, when I was married to the sea captain, we worked um, at, out of Atlantic City. Gardner's Basin, they had a 140-foot square rigger, and he, and he was the captain on it. And I think the the time that I recognized how little we were was we, and we did day sailing. We took groups out every day. And I can remember one time <clears throat> when we were out in the ocean with, I think, 50 or 100 people on board. And, you know, he said, you know, here, take the wheel. So I did. There is nothing that makes you feel smaller than when the wind fills the sails and the boat surges ahead. I mean, it's Uh, like that kind of power. mm -hmm. Unbelievable to feel. I I mean, and respect like crazy. Right. Um, But but it's, you know, I think one of the things that that was in the, the March... Um, 
prediction was how weather was going to uh, go out of hand and that there was no way you can, no army can combat weather, you know, wind, fire, water. I mean, it's it's so mm-hmm. powerful. It's Mother Nature, and there is no way of combating it. We have to cooperate with it, and I don't think we're doing that these days. Mm-hmm. When you no, it's see more volcanoes mm-hmm. erupting, look at what's happening in um, is it Iceland that that volcano erupting yet again. Mm-hmm. In Iceland, Iceland, yeah, I Iceland. think it's Iceland or Nor- Norway. Yeah, I should double check that, but yeah, I know it's one of them. It's it's pretty sure it's Iceland, and and mm-hmm. um, and then another one down in um, in Hawaii, another volcano is is throwing up. So. Oh really? That's interesting. I haven't checked I, that I out think, either. I think Ring of Fire is becoming ignited again. And I'm just hoping that, that, you know, Yellowstone doesn't decide to erupt. But I don't know. Well, now that you said it, it's probably listening. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, we're overdue. We're overdue because everything's out of balance. And and actually, right now, this country is so off off balance right now that anything goes when it comes down to that. So, yeah, no doubt. Well, and that that New New Madrid. fault line is due to go off mm-hmm. too. Right. And yeah. the last time that one went off it, it was a nine on the Richter scale. And of course I'm yeah, very I, close yeah. to that particular one. Uh, keep an eye out for that. And they have one property here. That's right. You know the dams are something I'm looking at, so I know they're trying to dismantle a lot over there in California, but I'm telling you point blank, uh the dams are very, very concerning to me right now. So keep an eye on that. Really? I think it's more about the people coming over the border, my radar's telling me. But, uh, yeah, I just don't trust much. But when you you look at, um, but Nevada, or Nevada, I don't know how, what the right pronunciation is. You know, if if the dam that feeds Nevada goes dry, you're going to see, you're going to see that that town go up in smoke. Mm Mm-hmm, Yeah. I well, mean, look what's going on in they, Texas right they now. They depend you... so much. Mm-hmm. Why, is Texas going okay. dry, too? Well, you know, no, all the fires that are going on over there um, right now, just near the panhandle, that, that's all out of control. So they've had quite a bit because out of fires and a lot of stuff going on. And then that eclipse, that solar eclipse that's coming through is it next month, that's going to be something. In Texas. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. What? No, it's, well, uh, in my opinion, I actually see. thought about getting out there just to see it because I thought it'd be so cool. It's it's, one, it's a one in a million shot to go check it out. You know, full uh, solar eclipse on there, total solar eclipse. Well, will, will, it be, will it be visible? It's in Texas, you know, a lot of time but I'm not sure it's... it's there's a map throughout the United States where it's going to be go the traversing where it's going to go. I think you might actually get to see it. I can't tell. I'll have to double check and look at the map. I know I won't where I'm at right now, but it should be very interesting. I think it's just one of those things where if you can well, if see it, if you're out, do it. What's that? Well, if you, if it's visible in if it's visible in Nashville, you're welcome to stay here and we'll watch it together. Oh, that'd be so fun. Well, you know something major would happen if that if I can visit you. <laughs> like, hold on, hold on for the ride here. Wait a second. Let me look at the eclipse map. I'll have to send it That'd over to scary. you. April eighth. So that's when wow. it's going to be. Yeah. So yeah, Texas is going to get a real good view of that, which is interesting because Texas seems to be in the midst of a lot right now. You know. So isn't it interesting how that's going to happen? Well, let's let's see. I mean, I'm not that far from Texas. Are you? In, where are you located again? What, what area? Nashville. Oh, you're in Nashville. Okay. You might you might be able to see it. I don't yeah, know. I have to look looks, at this. It looks like it. I think so because it's going near Memphis. Um, I bet you you get to see some part of it. 
Well, I'm yeah, I'm just three hours from Memphis, so I'm close. Yeah, that'd be cool, wow. Barbara. That's very significant, if you ask me. I think there's something to be yeah. said about it. Goodness. Yeah, I think you will be able to the see it. The other thing. <clears throat> The other thing that I think people should be aware of is the 37th parallel. Oh, Um, yes. The 37th, (laughs) yeah. The 37th parallel is where most major earthquakes are occurring. And it's, it's what? What's that? Laura? No, I'm I, here. I, Can you I, hear me? You know, I. But, yeah. Okay. I thought you were gone. Um, no, I'm not. <laughs> the 37th parallel. You're, you're here. You're here. Uh, the 37th parallel is where major earthquakes are are occurring, and they're occurring far more um, frequently than ever before. And that's that's enti- that's that's around the entire planet. It's not just the U.S. It's the whole planet. If you look at what's on the 37th parallel, it's rather shocking. So do pay attention to the 37th parallel because a lot of, a lot of activity is going on there. I didn't look at that. Now, where, where did you hear that I, one? Is that something you picked up on your radar? Um, that's something that I picked up on, and I just saw. Um, Excellent. Gosh, was it a? I, it may have been um, on an ancient alien program too. About I'll have to. I'm gonna look it parallel. up. Very interesting. Because so would I show you this? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off. I apologize. <laughs> no, you you go ahead. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. I said sent you that the total solar eclipse of Monday, April eighth, twenty twenty four. It says won't be total in Nashville. You'll see ninety five percent of the sun's face covered by the moon. So. But still, um, oh. but when I look at the map, it looks like a big X. What is the deal here? And it's also the X is covering the state of Texas. That's just too trippy for me. Wow. Yeah. Talk about X marks the that, spot, right? That's kind of, yeah. That's something. That's something significant. Very interesting. And I will check up the thirty or check out the thirty seventh okay. parallel too. Thank you. That's interesting as well. Yeah, if you type in, there, there are um, there are a uh, couple of ancient alien things, the two of them that that hit um, that hit the thirty seventh pa- parallel, and um, so yeah, there there are two of them that do that. So uh, three of them actually. So yeah, check them out because it it just uh i i knew that there was something um around the 37th parallel and then then all of a sudden there something was on one of the ancient aliens but there are at least three three different ancient alien programs that that address the 37th parallel and that most a great many of the UFO sightings occur on the 37th parallel as well. That is now, interesting. Some of the, some of the, um, some of their, the, their philosophy was that um, a lot of the areas that have the earthquakes have um, granite as their foundation, and when granite is, granite is, granite of course has crystal in it, and when you put that under uh, pressure, it does emit a frequency, mm-hmm. and so that they're saying that 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 frequency may be a frequency that that either helps to charge or um, charge you know the UFOs. It may be you know something that they they um, they can draw power or energy from. But uh, I found mm-hmm. it very interesting that uh, it had it had so much. Especially earthquake stuff, which right. you know blew me away slightly. That makes that makes a so, makes a lot of sense to me when you're talking about with the frequencies. Each one is associated with the frequency. 
uh, it would make sense that if um, something else, maybe a different field of energy, different dimensional field opening up or portal or all kinds of activity with frequencies that are starting to resonate, getting more intense. Yeah, that was that was yeah that was one of their um, philosophies that, that when, uh-huh. when earthquakes occurred that that um, the frequency that that was emitted by the grinding of the of the plates together were, were opening portals. And uh, have you ever been in an earthquake? I have a long time ago in California, and I, I didn't like it at all. <laughs> yeah, I was. It weirded me out. Um, I was in, I was in one, um, and, and it wasn't a huge one, but I heard the plates grinding together, and it's a sound mm. I will never forget. I mean, it oh, was I bet. just, it was, uh, it, 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 you know, it was early in the morning. My windows were open. It was, it was springtime, and. Uh, you know, the shaking was cool. I looked at the cat and the dog and said, you're supposed to alert me for things like this. <laughs> and, and then the next thing I knew, I had the cat and the dog on the bed with me, and it was like, Aww. great, you know. <laughs> but the, the grinding wow. of the plates together, oh, my goodness, that was, that, was, that, was, that was an awesome experience. Where were you? Were you in California? But, uh, no, I was in New York. Wow. It was only a three. So, you Still. know, I, I can't imagine. I know my son My son was in um, college during the big um, earthquake in, um, it was in San, uh, San Diego? No, it was in um, San Francisco. But they felt it in L.A. and bridges collapsed and stuff like that. And... Mm-hmm. Um, I've never spoken to him about did he hear anything, but but he did he did call the school where I was teaching and and said to them, tell my mom I'm okay. There's been an earthquake here, and mm. you know then I saw the earthquake and it was like holy crap. But he said they they were on the roof of the fraternity watching buildings burn. Wow, yeah, I believe it. It's amazing. I don't like the feeling at all. It's very unsettling. And actually, it puts you in that mode of just not being able to rest, so that you immediately want to go, like, you know, in the middle of the doorway <laughs> for the aftershocks, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, not a real fan well, of earthquakes. What, what we had what we had was a three, so, you know, I don't think mm. there was an aftershock. I was lucky to get the first shock. But, right. Um, I think this one was like a five-point something. I yeah, can't remember. I, it actually destroyed a few things, you know, when I was out there. Gas lines in this well, area. I'm finding it, it's really kind of it, it's interesting because um, the only major storms they have here in Tennessee, of course, are the um, the, the um, twisters, which are mm-hmm. the, the ones that are, I'm, I'm most afraid of. But but yeah, and and there have been a couple really big ones that have come pretty close to me. At one point, we had the warning, and I was in my safe room with a cat and um, my son called me and he said you know it's headed straight for you and I said well I can't do anything about that now and um, it, it it did come within a mile or two of me which was wow. a little scary and, mm-hmm. and I, I, I drove I drove around with a friend um, just to see what it was you know what was going and my God, you know, places were just torn apart or, you know, totally off the foundations and no pieces of it anywhere. And um, there was a jewelry store that got hit, too. I was going to get out and help people look for jewelry, but I, I suspect they got most of it out of the way before before mm-hmm. the twister hit. But, you know, it, it was – and I've been in hurricanes and I've been in a lot of other storms, but, but – um, Twisters—they scare me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, okay. So of course I moved here. Right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I haven't it's, been around it's, them. It's kind of like um, hurricanes are really pretty crazy. They're 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 really cool, but they're they're a lot more destructive actually. Um, mm-hmm. 
you know, it's no matter – Mother Nature is just incredible. I think, you know, let me let me rethink that. I think the thing I would be most frightened at would be uh, of would be a volcano erupting mm-hmm. and being in the vicinity. Mm-hmm. You know, I would. That can I would be very be, intense. I would be tail. Yeah, no. I mean, lava is not something that you can avoid. Right. You know, if it's yeah, coming right at you. Island. I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that's probably a little, a little more scary than other stuff. The tsunamis. But, yeah, but, you know, there's, all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah, tsunami. That would not be fun mm-hmm. either. Mm-mm. So, yeah. Yeah. So I guess I'll just Definitely. stick with my twister and hope. No, oh, you'll be <laughs> fine. Shields up, no twisters, just peaceful energies. Right. So so what's what kind of storms do you have where you are? Or is it uh, mostly fires? just electrical. I mean, we have a lot of fires here. Unfortunately, we have too many fires. So that's what it's like California. We get a lot of fires. Um, other than that, just you know, the snowstorms are snowstorms. They are what they are. But yeah, I'm, tornadoes, I guess, but not where I am. Uh, not not at my location. But yeah, the, I think the biggest thing is the fires. Just a real problem with that. Each year, it gets worse and worse. So I, you know, I get so tired of having to is. have everything I, I, in it to go back. Well, yeah, and and you know I've thought seriously about having a backpack packed, um, mm-hmm. but you know, so she'd have to have her backpack too. So yeah, make sure she has one. Put your footies in there. I know my kids, my well, first kids I'm, have to come with me too. Know, I mean, just load them up and move them out. So. Well. Um, I, she was not happy with being because when it, when it got close, I did. It, it, it's a half bath, but it's in the center of the house, so it's the safest place. And I mm-hmm. looked at her and I said, "You're not going to like this." And I I shut the door, and she looked at me like, "Are you crazy? Do you know how close it is here?" And, you know, <laughs> That's funny. She, she did was you have not two thrilled with, with being closed in? I did. I one of them passed away. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not know that, went. Barbara. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, he oh, he, he he had a a traumatic injury and he had to be sent over the bridge. And oh. what's interesting is he was the he was the most dynamic and and um he was the one that everybody loved because he was in your mm-hmm. face. And when he passed away poof, suddenly came to life. She talked. Wow. She never talked before he passed away. You know, she'll talk oh. at you. She'll tell you, you know, it's, it's time for a meal or whatever. She oh. was never a lap cat. Now whenever I sit down, she's on my lap asleep. Um, oh. Yeah, she it changed her personality him. tremendously. Right. Yeah. I don't I'm think sure she misses him. He tried to kill her you every day. So? No, no, no. Grief. He always oh. attacked her. He, he, you know, it's terrible. He was a tough boy. Uh, um, well, they were so, siblings, though, right? Were but they but he was, Oh yeah, he was. He was actually playing, but he played very rough, and she was not a mm-hmm. rough player. So, oh. you know, I I had my my spritz bottle to spritz to break him up, but mm-hmm. um, so she's she's coming to her own. So it's really kind That's of cool good. to see the the cat she's become. Yeah, that is nice. But she did not like well, being shut in the, she didn't like being shut in the bathroom for sure. So. Oh, I bet. <laughs> well, it's good she's there. Well, the it, company. Oh yeah. Oh, I I I said to my son, you know, I I I can't I cannot imagine my not having a fur a fur baby of some sort. Mhm. Ever. Yeah. And I said I just want to make sure that that when I'm not that whatever pet I have is not sent to a kennel any place. He said, I will rehome anything you've got. I oh, said, good. okay. Yeah, that's so, what I think with my first kids, too. Of course, they're going to go through a Stargate with me, so I won't worry about that. <laughs> We're all going to teleport. Uh, wouldn't no. it be funny if, know. You, if, you, if you go through a Stargate? Wouldn't it be great if you went through a Stargate and they talked? I love it. Oh, my, I swear they do in their own language, but yeah. Yeah, they're interesting, all right. I would love that. They're so funny. 
I think when, 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 when we were Pangea, I think the animals were able to communicate with us. Mm-hmm. I think sure. that there was mm-hmm. a... I mean, it, you know, you think of some of the things they see and they experience, and it's like every now and then I get a look like, you know, you're so stupid if you believe that, you know. <laughs> I would I would really love to, you know, I she does send messages. I do get messages from her and stuff like that. But, but well, to have good. really a conversation, a real conversation, would be so cool. Yeah, it's I interesting. Think, well, know. they are telepathic. There's no doubt about that. They're very psychic, very telepathic to information, you know, with the pictures and anything else. I know my dogs are really oh, psychic, yeah. too. They're really sensitive. Man, they read energy. I've never seen anything like it. Both of them. Real interesting. Well, when I used to do readings at the house, I would um, people would come in, and I, I, I would sit and talk to them a little bit before we did the reading. And I, I, I would tell them, I said, you know, I hate to, you know, let, let me just explain to you what's going on here. You're being CAT scanned. And if my animals suddenly disappeared and were nowhere to be seen, I would not do the reading. If the cat just curled up on the couch or wherever, I knew that this person's energy was in a place where, you know, it it would be a safe thing to to do a reading with the person. Mm -hmm. And um, there was one lady that that said, that's ridiculous. And I said, no, it, it really is. Is, is appropriate and she said well I don't see any of your animals and I said well that's because I have to reschedule with you and oh, she, how nice. and she, she got very huffy and um, she said well maybe I don't want to reschedule with you and I said well that's okay it's just not a good day to do a reading for you and I'd be happy to reschedule you or whatever your preference is and she left in a huff but wow. it turns out she was a paranoid schizophrenic Oh really? Yeah, they oh, nice. save they save Oh yeah. She she Very was good. crazy. Yeah, some of them Every can now be and crazy. then we get those. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful. I think the internet tends to screen them a and, little bit you know, better when you're dealing with clients. Back in the old days we'd have all kinds of people show up physical, you know. Oh yeah. That's a little more no, challenging back um... then. <laughs> Well, back in the day, there were some very unique people that went for readings, let me tell you. Not, oh, yeah. Not, the, not, not so much. I mean, yeah. they're they're more lo- looking for spiritual um, direction and, and advice and things like that, which is, which is really great. But, oh, my goodness, some of the strange people that, especially when I did the readings on the, um, on the air, um, mm-hmm. I did the... Wednesday, Monday and Wednesday evening, I, I was on from 11 to 1, and um, oh my goodness, some some unique people that would call in and ask strange things, and really, so I, I was glad 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 when I got away from that and got into I'll give you what spirit gives me, and and then. You know that be, that w- that became for me more meaningful because it's what they needed to hear, not what they wanted to hear. Mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah, they have more control over that. Yeah, no doubt. But yeah, I can imagine they come crawling out of the woodwork. They, they did. I I created um, probably thousands of codependent people that followed me all over the internet for a number of years calling in and getting readings every time I was on the air someplace doing readings. And, wow. you know, it, it finally got to me, like, I've already answered this question three times on three different shows for you. Are you not listening? You know? <laughs> wow. That's trippy. Yeah. Well, I think some people yeah. need, a, they need a guru sometimes. Even though you're not, like, the guru guru probably to them, but, but still it's a lifeline. It's some kind of spiritual lifeline. I find that a lot of people look for that. Nowadays, especially, I think there are a lot well, of people who are just kind of was, well. That was some of it, but some of it was they like to be, say, "I was on the radio last night," you know. Mm-hmm. So I was That's on, funny. you know, on a on a show last night, and and <clears throat> there were some 
very strange people, and we <laughs> learned to spot them and and not and not pull them on the air. But Jeannie was great. I had uh, Jeannie was my uh, co-host, and she's the one that, that scanned all the calls. And mm-hmm. I, I know there was, and she was great with she was great with the real weird ones when she got one one guy that you know was giving her a little bit of trouble, and he finally said to her. Did you know that you're you should you should be how did he put it? Did you know that you're actually bisexual and gay and you should be you know with another woman and not with a man? And Jeannie's answer was, "Well, what makes you think I'm not?" <laughs> <laughs> Which was not true, but you know she she was able to call their bluff and it was really kind of fun. <laughs> Listening to her talk after the show was over was often as much fun as doing the show. Um, <clears throat> speaking of show, um, we're out of time. Oh, my goodness. So, well, it's been um, a wonderful show with you, Barbara. Thank you for... Oh, yeah, and I, I think this one they'll let be on the air, um, <laughs> hopefully. But if not, we'll it will see. be on Blog Talk, and it will be on all the Blog Talk servers, So, and it will be That's on right. Rumble. Uh, so... Uh, if we're pulled, it's only going to be from one place, not from all of them. Yeah, we know. Um, we know who they and, would be. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's my turn for next time, and I'll see if I can pull as good a topic as you did this time. This was a good topic. I think so, too. That's very good. So, and thank you, Barbara, and happy birthday so, again to you. Oh, well, thank you. And, and let everybody know where your shows are. I'm over there on Revolution Radio, over there. Um, the hyperspace uh, night files, which is on Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern time, and then of course I have Raven Stars Witching Hour, which is Saturday 12 midnight Eastern time, 9 p.m. Pacific on Revolution Radio, Freedom Slips dot com. City away, okay. and here once a month. So I will, and here once a, yeah last Sunday of the month usually. Yep, <laughs> we try when they're not technical. We're going on or, or they're about on my end. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> So okay, and and I will I will choose next time, and we'll have awesome. another way of uh, putting information out there. Thank you so much again, and well, thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you everybody for listening. And um, do make sure that you check her her um, her other shows out because they are as good as this one is too. Thanks a lot, everybody. Good night. What if you could have a career where the opportunities are as vast as our nation, where it's not about mission statements, but a shared mission? At U.S. Customs and Border Protection, we go beyond to protect more than borders, from ship to shore, air to ground, cities to local communities. CBP agents and officers are keeping people safe. Join U.S. Customs and Border Protection and go beyond for something far greater than yourself. Learn more at cbp.gov careers. Hello, this is Ohavia Phillips. And I'm Dennis Reed. And as members of Charlotte's black community, we're proud to call the Queen City home. And with Charlotte Love Notes, we're sharing our love story and spotlighting the black-owned businesses that make this city so special. That's right, the restaurants, shops, and more that we love and express the craft and culture of Charlotte's black community. So head to charlottesgotalot.com to see our love notes and plan your trip. And show your love to the community that inspires us. 